The most frustrating part of the 3D modeling process by far that I get the most questions about is modeling the hair. Where do you even begin? It is by far the most painful part of the process. It can be so hard to manage all these disparate little pieces of hair and it's really hard to just simplify that down into a low poly model. It's difficult to find where to even begin and what each step of that process looks like. That's why in this video today, I'm gonna break down all the different steps I use to make low poly hairstyles just like the ones you're seeing on screen right now and by the end of this video I think you're gonna have a much better idea and a whole lot more tools in your tool belt in order to make any low poly hairstyle you can possibly imagine. But without further ado let's jump right into it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content just like this and comment below if you find this video helpful. Thank you. And I have some bonus tips at the end of this video for how to texture low poly hair so make sure to stick around to the end. This tutorial is going to be a little bit more advanced so if you're brand new to Blender and just starting out I'd highly recommend you start with my low poly character modeling series which I will link in the description below this video. Before we break down all the different shape types of low poly hair and talk about my actual workflow for making low poly hair 3D, let's talk about the absolute fundamentals first. In order to model low poly hair in 3D, it's really essential to understand the core behind what we're actually doing here, which is simplifying. In real life, the hair in our heads tends to have between 90,000 to 150,000 individual strands. That is obviously far too much detail for us to model in a low poly model. So in order to make any hairstyle low poly, we must simplify it into its fundamental shapes using as little geometry as possible. If you've ever studied drawing before, you may have heard that simplifying the complex forms of the human body into simple 3D shapes helps us draw and shade the human form. And in a similar vein, taking thousands of strands of hair and simplifying them into simple geometric shapes helps us model hair in 3D. As a result, finding references of the hairstyle you'd like your character to have and tracing low poly geometrics forms on top of it can actually be a pretty great way to plan out your 3D model's hair. And in general, using references when constructing your low poly hair can be very, very helpful. One of the best resources for finding low poly hairstyle references are websites such as the Models Resource, where you can download characters from games such as Mega Man Legends and study how their hairstyles were constructed on such an incredibly tiny triangle budget. Any character models you can find on this website from the PS1 to PS2 era would probably be a very great source of reference as you're building out the topology of your hair. Sketchfab also has really excellent 3D model resources available on it as well. But don't be afraid to get references of high poly hairstyles or images of actual hair because any hairstyle can be simplified down into low poly hair using the different hair shape types we're about to discuss right now. Modeling just about anything in 3D is easier when you split it into chunks. As a result, I like to split my low poly hairstyles into shape types. Keep in mind that this is just how I like to break it down for my own projects and this is not a definitive list, just a lot of tools, techniques, and shapes that you can use in order to model your unique hairstyle. But let's start with the most fundamental shape type of hair, which I'll call the head base. You can think of this part as the overall shape of your character's skull. Even if you have a crazy hairstyle that goes all over the place, beginning your hair by modeling in this head base can be a great reference point for you to place other layers of hair on top of, such as the next low poly hair shape, planes. Planes are exactly what they sound like. These are literally planes that have no thickness, so they're paper thin, that represent the strands of hair that lay on top of the head base. These represent parts of your hair such as bangs, curtain bangs, cowlicks, and more. I always start these with a literal plane and blender that I then extrude from and align with my turnaround drawing. I often extrude from this plane and have triangles in these hair strands, which is fine because we do not need to subdivide our low poly hair. If any part of the hair I'm modeling is symmetrical, I try to put a mirror modifier on it as soon as possible because I'll be able to model it in 3D twice as fast. And that goes for planes very often. The next shape type though is what I call hair spikes. 
You can make these by extruding from a plane, then merging it at center in Blender. These are usually on the sides or the back of the hair. You see hair spikes in a lot of anime inspired low poly styles, such as the Mega Man Legends series, and you can see some examples of them here. Another useful shape type, however, are curtains. That name actually doesn't make that much sense in hindsight, but whatever, the name doesn't matter. They're the part of the hair which hang off the back of the head base directly for longer hairstyles. These are often just plain shapes with some loop cuts in between. And if you're keeping notes, you'll notice that on the back of Panty Anarchy's hair here, you can see little hair spikes interspersed with the back of her hair. That's an example of combining these different shape types. This next shape type is more like a technique in order to utilize image transparency. Hair cards. These are transparent glands that have a texture applied to them that has hair drawn onto it, allowing you to have extremely round, smooth shapes in your hair or highly detailed hair types that just typically wouldn't normally be achievable in a low poly count model. You can use this for very wavy or curly hair if you want a very smooth look in your low poly character's hair, or you can use this to add so much more detail to your hair without actually adding any more triangles to your model whatsoever. So if you want to save on your triangle budget, this is a really fantastic technique. Another trick I like to use with hair cards are taking them and then duplicating them into a circular shape, allowing for complex shapes found in things like bunny tails or cheerleader pom-poms. You can even set these up to be tracked to the position of your camera so that it's always following it, kind of like a sprite in Doom might. Games like Mario 64 even do a trick where some elements of their body are 3D, whereas other parts are 2D. Doing so can really help you save on that poly count. That's called billboarding, though I don't personally do that in Blender often. Finally, the last shape type we'll discuss here are what I will call boxes. These are the parts of your models, like ponytails, pigtails, or buns that are made of 3D box-like shapes. Boxes are extremely useful for larger hair shapes and are usually made up of quads but sometimes end in tries. You can see examples of these shapes in my Juliet and Carmelita models here. Notice how they combine different shape types together. But with all these different techniques and shape types out of the way, how do we actually model hair in 3D? Let's jump right into my actual step-by-step -step workflow for modeling hair in 3D. Before I ever start modeling hair, I model the face of my character first, usually with this very simple face topology. I have a tutorial on how to model faces right here if you'd like to check it out. The first part of the hair I model, however, is the head base. Or maybe it'd be more accurate to call this the hair base, because for my own workflow, I only start with this simple face geometry. Then after modeling my face and getting that face geometry in place, I spawn in a cube that I then add a series of loop cups into as needed in order to make it more round and shaped like hair. It's always better to start with too little detail in your low poly model than to start with too much. I'll also delete half of my cube and put a mirror modifier on this so that I can get it in place much faster so I don't have to model everything twice, it'll be way faster. And this part of the hair is usually symmetrical anyway, so to start off with, I almost always add a mirror modifier. After I've added a few loop cuts onto my cube, I shape it in a way that better represents my turnaround drawings front and side view. If you don't know how to place turnaround drawings in Blender, I have a tutorial that covers that right here. And as you continue to refine your hair shape, you can move some of the geometry on this cube a little bit more outward if your hair has a little bit more volume in the sides of it, or if it's a little bit more wavy and foofy. And every piece of low poly hair I ever build either begins as a plane or a cube. For example, I always model bangs with simple planes, whereas things like ponytails are modeled with cubes that I then modify as needed from there. And while I have actually modeled this hairstyle before, it still took me quite a few attempts off camera to get this looking correct. Even for me, modeling hair is not easy and takes a lot of trial and error. And if my hairstyle's bangs are not symmetrical, like they're not in my case here, I'll apply my mirror modifier, then start extruding from my hair base directly. And again, don't be afraid to use triangles on your hair or intersect your face geometry with your hair geometry when needed, because we do not need to subdivide our low poly model, so having tries on our model is perfectly okay.
And throughout this part of the process, I'm pressing Alt plus Z to turn on X-ray view so that I can compare how my 3D model is looking directly against my front view turnaround drawing. I could also move my turnaround drawing in front of my model and just lower its opacity, but this was just a little bit faster in my case here. I'll also occasionally use the knife tool, which is K in Blender, to make new loop cuts around my model, along with the merge tool, that's M on your keyboard, uh, when I'm in vertex select in order to merge verts together. Now that the basic shape of my low poly hair is in place, I try to combine all the different chunks of my hair along with my face geometry and merge verts together to fill in any visible holes in my geometry as needed. Something I'll do a lot during this part of the process is go to edge select, then I'll shift click two different edges and then press F, which will essentially bridge those two edges together. Uh, which is really useful when you're trying to kind of fill in these holes here. And again, I'm not worried about creating tries here because this is a low poly model, it's not getting subdivided, and it won't really be an issue. And here I'm kind of just playing with different vert positions and trying to clean up my geometry overall because just because something looks accurate to your turnaround drawing does not always mean it looks great in 3D and sometimes needs some final touches. And after my hair base is modeled here, I use it as a point of reference as I start blocking in any other hair shapes that the hairstyle requires. These are the hair shape types we just discussed, so things like bangs, ponytails, curtains, cowlicks, etc. This is just a quick demo, so the topology here isn't perfect, but that's my hair modeling workflow. With all those techniques and shape types, you can model just about any hairstyle you can imagine. After you've made a few low poly hairstyles, it becomes much faster to make new ones after that point. That's because you'll be able to take an existing hairstyle from a model you've already made, then copy and paste it into your new scene and remix it into a new hairstyle rather than needing to start from scratch every single time. You can do this by going to File, Append, then locating the blend file you want the hairstyle from on your computer, then clicking on the Object folder where you'll find your hairstyle object. Just make sure you've named your hair object properly in your blend file before you do this. Not only does remixing hair save you a bunch of time, but it can also be a great way to study different hair modeling techniques. In fact, that's why I'm including every hairstyle you see on screen right now into a hairstyle mega pack. Earlier, we talked about the importance of having reference, and this mega pack gives you 3D reference of the actual topology and texturing techniques I used to create almost every low poly hairstyle I've ever made in 3D. This pack contains a blend file with all these different hairstyles, including all their original hair textures, in order to see exactly how I've built the geometry and textured these hairstyles. You can even use this topology to quickly remix these hairstyles into a brand new one. You can download this pack on my Patreon page today. Plus, this hairstyle mega pack just got added as part of my Gumroad course that teaches my full workflow for creating any low poly character. And I really do mean my full workflow. We talk about the fundamentals of character design, drawing turnaround drawings, painting textures, rigging your 3D model, animating it, and more. The price of this course increases on the 10th of August, so make sure to get it today if you're interested. Link to both my Patreon and the Gumroad course are in the description below this video. But now, let's talk about texturing hair. Hair texturing technique can vary wildly from different artist to artist, and there's a lot of options with low poly. In my texturing style, I like to keep things extremely basic and divide my hair shading into three separate chunks. Base color, 
shadow color, and highlight area. My hair's base color is usually a pretty bright, whereas my hair's shadow color is usually at least 20% darker and more saturated. My hair's highlight color is often pure white, though sometimes it's a tinted color. You can find examples of either in so many different animations and illustration art styles, so the color choice is completely up to you. For the edge highlights I have on my hair, that's actually achieved using a Goo Engine exclusive shader effect called a curvature node. I get a lot of questions about this, so here's what my node setup looks like. This shading effect is unfortunately Goo Engine exclusive for the time being, however, I guarantee this will eventually be a part of Main Blender after they've developed their NPR rendering pipeline a little bit more over the coming years. After I've figured out my hair's base color, shadow color, and I've designed its highlights, I will put all three of those onto my texture map. For example, here's how that setup looks like on my low poly Astolfo model. I ended up putting these on Astolfo's face texture here. However, I could have also added this to his body texture and that would have been perfectly fine as well. I have my hair's base color right here, its shadow color right here, and its highlight color and the design of its highlights right here on my texture map. For UV unwrapping, I like to unwrap all my hair model's faces into three different sections of my UV map. One for my hair's base color, another for its shadow color, and a final section for my hair highlights. Before I start this process though, I will select all the geometry on my character that makes up their face and then press P to separate it from the rest of my hair just so that I can more easily UV unwrap my character's hair. For my hair's base color, I'll just UV unwrap it after selecting all the faces on my hair model. Then I move those faces in the UV editor to the section that has my hair base color. In the case of my Panty Anarchy model, I utilized a texturing technique called Gradient Texturing. Gradient texturing is where you add a gradient onto your texture that, in our case here, will smoothly transition from the hair base color to its shadow color, which gives my hair a really nice fall off that makes it feel, you know, more 3D, less flat, and gives it some more color depth. And for my shadow color, I actually do the exact same thing that I did for my base color of my hair, where I select all the faces on my hair that I want to have my hair's shadow color. Then I move plus scale those faces in the UV editor to the section on my texture map that has my hair shadow color. And then finally for hair highlights, I use my turnaround drawing as reference for where I would like to place my hair highlights on my hair. Keep in mind that at this point, I've already essentially copy and pasted the hair highlights I already drew on my turnaround drawing and I've pasted it into my texture sheet. Then I go to the front orthographic view in Blender, then select all the faces on my model that I want to receive hair highlights. Press U on my keyboard and click the project from view option. That will project my selected faces from the perspective of my camera, which I can then move and scale in the UV editor to align with wherever I put my hair highlights in my character's texture map. I try to do this for both the front and the back of my hair so that I can have additional detail on that side of the hair as well. And when UV unwrapping my bangs, I will sometimes use the project from view option after selecting them, then rotate their geometry in the UV editor so that the underside of my bang is getting a slight shadow on it. This is a nice way to add detail and ideally you have your hair base color on top of your shadow color or directly below your shadow color in your UV map vertically or horizontally so that this transition looks nice and sharp. But that about covers modeling and texturing hair. If you want to take the next step, my Gumroad course that teaches my workflow for creating any low poly character and that's everything from how to draw turnarounds to texturing your characters and rigging your final 3D model now includes my hairstyle mega pack as well. The value on this is insane and as a result, the price of the course is increasing on August 10th. So make sure to get it today if you're interested. Link is in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching though. Please like the video and comment below and subscribe if you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next one.